Hey everyone, in today's video I will show you how I installed the basic network infrastructure for our house. My wife and I are building a house right now. We have been designing it since the end of 2021 and broke ground about a year and a half ago. While my wife is in charge of the aesthetics of the house, I'm in charge of the tech. I've been working on our smart home for the last two years and you can see the high level plan in this diagram. In today's video, I want to focus on the hardwired network infrastructure, which is part of the highlighted area. We've had our house wired by a professional network security company based on a plan that I have given them. They got us a rack and wired up patch panels, but I'm taking over from here. But before we get to the rack installation, it's always a good idea to do some basic setup ahead of time. This is because there are always problems and the installation site is often not as accessible as a desk is. So a few days ago, I unboxed all the equipment, wired it up and booted it up for the first time. Just look at this cool ether lighting effect, isn't it pretty? Yeah, that took way longer than a few minutes, so let's cut here. Anyways, after everything was booted up, I did the basic setup through the app. Adoption took quite some time and it didn't work well at first. The reason was that everything needed updating. UDM console, the Unify OS, each of the switches, you name it. All of it needed updates. Only then, all devices could be adopted. I then set up some of the Wi-Fi networks as well as the virtual networks, disassembled everything and packed it all up to bring it to our house. It's a nice Saturday morning here in North Carolina and as you can see, I have a lot of work to do. Let's start with the UDM Pro Special Edition. I'm not going to install a hard disk in the UDM since we're going to use a separate NVR. As everything from Unify that is rack mountable, it comes with all the necessary hardware. So I screwed the brackets to the side and then installed the UDM in the rack. Next up is the aggregation switch. I thought about getting the high capacity version, but frankly I don't have enough 10 gig devices to connect together to justify the price increase. I wish there was a middle ground, since I'm probably going to use all 8 ports in the aggregation switch. Now for the heart of the network, the switches. We'll have well over 100 CAT6 cables going throughout the house, plus additionally all the gear in the rack and the IV closet needs to be accommodated. So we're going with three 48-port Pro Max PoE switches to have some room for growth. I made sure that all exterior devices such as cameras and outdoor access points are on the same switch so that the lightning strike can only fry one device. And yes, I know I need to add surge protectors, but they won't protect against a direct strike. So it's a good idea to isolate the rest of the network. For security, we're going with the UNVR Pro. We'll have about 25 cameras around the house, including doorbells, so there's a chance we'll need a second UNVR, but for now we'll start with one. However, I'm going to leave a 2U empty spot in the rack in case we need to upgrade. Luckily, Unify recently updated the Protect software to support NVR stacking, so two NVRs can be used together like they're one device. To power everything, we'll use the PDU Pro. Besides allowing to control each individual outlet separately, it has some neat advanced features that allow to power cycle the ISP modem automatically if an outage is detected. I'm not sure if we'll end up using this feature, it all depends on how stable our internet connection will be. Then for the brain of the smart home, I got a rack mount for three nooks. I run Home Assistant as a VM on one of the nooks and also run a K3S cluster to power all the services that I'm running at home. For now, I'm not installing the nooks themselves since they still power the smart home in our current rental. Last but not least, I'm going to add two power strips to the back of the rack. We have three separate 20 amp circuits in the AV closet, and I'm going to use two of them to power this rack through power strips. So the PDU Pro will be plugged into one power strip, and at a later point, I'll get the redundant power supply and plug it into the other power strip. That way, all that's coming out of the rack are two 20 amp power cables. 
Now let's take a look at the before and after of today's installation. Of course things aren't finished yet, but over the next few weeks I'll be able to connect everything else powered up and configure things. Stay tuned for more videos, this is just the beginning. Look at all that package material. Oh,